Hey everybody, today I am talking about my favorite indoor sport, which is basketball. Mm, that's kind of more like entertainment. I'm talking about competitive basketball at a variety of levels from junior high on up to the pro level. And the reason I like basketball is there's just like a ton of action all the time. You know basically where the ball is gonna go at any point in time. They're all moving toward that spot. You can pick your spots, you can get close to the action, and the price of entry into photography for basketball is relatively low. Now about a year ago, I made another how-to video on basketball. And I'll be honest with you, it was one of my first videos I ever made here for YouTube, and it's a little rough. And the content is good, but I think I, I could have gone into a lot more detail on certain aspects of the game or how I like to shoot it. So in this video, I like to update that previous video, give you more context, more details, uh, more things to think about when you're photographing basketball and improving your photos. All right, join me at the whiteboard. All right, everybody, welcome to my representation, low tech, albeit as it is of a basketball court. There's some other things we need to add to it, however. For example, there's probably player benches over here where the players are. There's like a scores table usually about right there. Uh, there's probably some stands back here and on this side. So with that basic setup, where do you like to photograph from? Well, for me, I like to shoot from the right-hand side facing inward. And I like to be in a position where obviously I want to get the most amount of photos. Now the great thing about basketball is you can be pretty darn close to the action. In fact, so close that they fall on top of you sometimes. Best places, in my opinion, are as follows. Right out here, which would be right here in this case. That way, you're just outside this three-point line or you could scoot over there. I like doing it this way, facing toward the benches so you can get bench reaction but this way you're shooting in this direction. Why? Because most players are right-handed. So when they come in, they tend to open up with their right hand, their body, and you have a much better shot of getting their face without it being covered by an arm. If they're coming in, if you're on the left-hand side, you're more likely to get arms across faces. So this is where one location I like to shoot from. Of course, you can also go in this direction. Another location I like to shoot from is right here, just outside this area they call the lane, to this line right here, just outside of it. If there's a basketball on a pedestal right there, a basketball hoop on a pedestal, you'll be right outside that. And you get all the action right in here, and of course, toward the benches. You can also get stuff down court with your typical lenses, 70 to 200. You know, you're probably in this area right here. Uh, you can't get as much down there unless you're really blowing up the photo, which I'm not really a big fan of large enlargements that big. Alternatively, you could be on this side, on the right-hand side, photographing in here, and you're really super close to this bench, not so close to that bench. But again, it gives you similar perspectives. Some things to look out for, cheerleaders. So cheerleaders will either be over here, you know, on either side of this basket or on the other side or both sides, I've seen that. Or they'll be in front of this crowd right here. Now, cheerleaders are really only a factor for what you're trying to do is if the court is really small, the building is small and everything's pushed in and basically you're intermingling with the cheerleaders, which is not a lot of fun. So I try to avoid the side that the cheerleaders are on. Some alternative locations you can photograph from that I like to do. If you have longer lenses, say a 300 or 400, you can park yourself up here in the stand someplace and photograph down. Either straight down like here, so you're up here shooting in this direction. Uh, same thing on this side. You can go alternatively over here or over here. Uh, but either way, it kind of gives you different perspectives. Uh, or you could go across the court Look at that big mess. Uh, you can go across the court and get some defensive action on either side, if you have that 300 or 400 lens. Of course, with most gems, they're pretty dark, so you better have, if you are gonna use a 300 or 400, better be like an F 2.8 lens. 
So now that we know some different locations you could park yourself out, let's talk about some of the best lenses for those locations. All right, now that we've talked about locations you can photograph from in the gymnasium, let's talk about the cameras you might use at those locations. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about using a 300 or a 400 from high up in the, st in the stands, and you can certainly do that. But let's face it, for most people, that's really out of their reach financially, and they're not professionals, and they don't need something that big, especially something that's an F2.8, which is thousands and thousands of dollars. Basically, you're buying a used car in that realm. So let's talk about something a little bit more realistic for most folks who are not professional or who are at least budding professionals, all right? I'll start with what I photograph normally with and then I'll give you some options that aren't quite as expensive, all right? So for the majority of my basketball photography, I use a Nikon D5 with a 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. This has proven to be the most versatile combination. It's not so much important as to what camera body, but this 70 to 200 range f 2.8 is just about perfect when it comes to basketball. You can shoot just everything from right up, basically right in front of you practically, out to about mid court. You know, down around the other end of the court, it's probably a little too far for the 200, but Anything in between, especially when the team you're photographing is on offense, is this 7200 is just about perfect. And if I were to recommend a first pro level lens for a budding sports photographer, it would be a 70 to 200 f 2.8. The second camera lens combination I like to use, well, this is my Nikon D850, and I have a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens mounted on it. This is the combination I use right next to the basket. So I'm sitting just to the right of the basket, uh, just outside the lane, and I'm getting all that action that happens right underneath the basket. The shots, the rebounds, those kind of things. Now, 70 is a little short for action much beyond that, you know, toward mid-court. That's when the 70 to 200 comes into play. But right up close, when they're right next to you, this is perfect for that. Now, if you don't have those cameras and you don't have those lenses, that's okay. This is what you really need to get started in basketball photography. Although that 70 to 200 is probably ideal, you can get away with a good old nifty 50. In fact, when I first started off in sports photography as a budding photojournalist in college, I was shooting with the 50 millimeter lens on a film camera, sitting right next to the basket, getting all the action right underneath the basket. And I got some great shots with the 50 millimeter lens. I had another camera and that one I had a 180-28 and that served the purpose of the 70 to 200. So that's how I got the near shots and the far shots. You could do something very similar with whatever arrangement you've got. Now, when it comes to DSLR versus mirrorless, that's kind of up to you. The world is kind of transitioning into mirrorless. It doesn't really matter for these purposes. Now, when it comes to DX versus FX, crop frame versus full frame, I highly recommend a full frame camera. You find that they just perform so much better in low light, high ISO situations. You just won't get nearly as much grain and noise with full frame as you do with crop frame cameras. So that is my recommendation. All right, so we talked about ISO just a tad right there. Let's just move right on into camera settings. So when it comes to camera settings for sports photography in an indoor environment like a basketball court, I've done several different videos that kind of talk about those types of things. In fact, some of them in great detail, and I'll link the most pertinent ones down below. But in general, this is my philosophy when it comes to indoor sports like basketball. First of all, shutter speed at the high school level and probably in the junior high level and above, probably one one thousandth of a second is a good starting point for sports photography. It stops most action. There'll still be a little bit of uh, motion blur in there, but it stops most action. I know some people tell you you can go down to five hundredth of a second. I just don't recommend it unless you're in a really, really poor lighting situation because you get a lot of motion blur at five hundredth of a second. So one one thousandth of a second is kind of like my base level that I start at if at all possible. Next, aperture. F2.8 is pretty much the standard when it comes to indoor photography. Unless you're in a venue that is very, very well lit, 2.8 is about where you have to be at. If you're photographing with lenses that are above that four, 5.6, six, you're gonna run into problems. You're just gonna have to, you're gonna be forced to use very high ISOs. Again, using those shutter speeds that we're talking about here. So when it comes to ISOs, it's really based on the lighting conditions. 
using the standard settings, shutter speed, aperture that I just talked about. Most gems I encounter around ISO 6400, 8000, maybe 10,000, depending on the situation, of course. So what I normally do is I'll walk into the gym, I'll set my shutter speed, my aperture at my baseline levels that I just talked about. I'll kind of guesstimate an ISO, set it, take a, a quick shot, see how that comes out. Based on how that comes out, I'll either increase my ISO or I'll lower my ISO. Now in gymnasiums, there's something else you need to consider when it comes to your ISO. And in the past, I've often talked about using auto ISO in these types of situations. The reason being is, oftentimes the middle of the court will have a different lighting than behind the basket. Sometimes behind the basket, there's no lighting. If you're lucky, there are lights that extend all the way to the end of the gym. And if so, you probably have pretty decent even lighting. Even so, I have found that right underneath the basket, you're about half a stop to a stop below what's in the middle of the court. So I have to make a decision. Do I use auto ISO and let it bounce back and forth between those two areas? Or do I find kind of like a sweet spot in between? Or do I make a decision to just go with the higher ISO, make sure I capture the stuff that's in the lower light levels and let the stuff that's brighter lit just go a little overexposed. Generally, that works better than trying to raise up underexposed photos. Now, when it comes to white balance, I'll be honest with you, most gymnasiums I walk into, I take a couple of test shots on auto white balance, and if they work out fine, that's what I shoot with. In most gymnasiums, auto white balance works perfectly fine. Now, I have done some videos where I told you about some different techniques that you could use, and I'll link it right up here, but in general, auto white balance works just fine. If it doesn't, it might be a situation where you have to correct it in post, but make sure when you do that, that you have the same settings throughout or you photograph in RAW. Speaking of RAW, let's talk about JPEG versus RAW. So if you're first starting off in this kind of photography, uh, you're not used to editing, you don't have a lot of experience in it, I really do recommend you just shoot in JPEG with in-camera noise reduction. Figure out if your camera has that and set it. If you're a little more experienced photographer, you could shoot in RAW and edit RAW photos. Your camera manufacturer may have a RAW editor that works perfectly fine. I use the Nikon NX Studio. It works great. Uh, Lightroom works well with RAW photos. However, what I like to use for denoise purposes, noise reduction purposes, is a product called Topaz Denoise. Again, I've talked about it extensively in this video right here, and I'll link it down below. I like to use that for denoise, both for JPEGs and for RAW photos. And if your camera has a function, there's something called anti-flicker or flicker reduction, turn that on. Some people will advocate not to use it. I don't understand it. Uh, flicker reduction works great. You'll, there are situations where you, you can't see it, but your camera can. And sometimes when the camera fires, every other frame will have a different color balance and will have a different light levels. That anti-flicker is helps reduce that kind of problem. And remember everybody, I've got some links to some good follow-up videos down below in the descriptions. Please go check them out. While you're here, hit that subscribe, hit that like. I appreciate it. See you next time.